Today we're going to look at a pretty interesting integral that involves quite a few natural logarithms. So in particular we will calculate the integral from 0 to infinity of the natural log of x plus 1 times the natural log of x over x times x plus 1. So let's notice if we were to for instance delete the x plus 1 in the denominator and the natural log of x plus 1 in the numerator then we could most definitely find the antiderivative of what's left over fairly easily with a substitution. The antiderivative of natural log over x, natural log of x over x I should say, is not so hard to calculate. That being said, I believe the definite integral would diverge. But that's not what we're looking at here. We've got quite a bit more complicated of a situation. Okay, so how are we going to approach this? Well, our strategy will be to make a substitution which will, when substituted, make x plus 1 and x look fairly similar. And the substitution that will work will be u equals x over x plus 1. Okay, so let's see. If u is x over x plus 1, then that means ux plus u is the same thing as x, just by multiplying both sides by x plus 1. But that tells us that ux minus x is the same thing as negative u, just moving some things around. We can like pretty obviously factor an x out of this left hand side and then perform division. That means x is equal to u over 1 minus u. And that's from factoring this x out like I said and then dividing by what's left over which is u minus 1 and then having this minus sign here change the order of subtraction in the denominator. So that takes care of this x here as well as this natural log of x here. But in order to take care of the x plus 1 and the natural log of x plus 1 as well as the dx, it will be useful to rewrite this as 1 over 1 minus u minus 1. And you can see that this equality between these two objects holds by just giving a common denominator to these two terms and then pushing them together. Okay, the useful thing here is that if we add 1 to x, we will achieve just 1 over 1 minus u because of how we've written this. Okay, so let's box this x right here. This version of x will be useful. And let's box this x plus 1 here. That will also be useful. We'll also need dx for this term in the um, integral as well. And we can get that either by taking the derivative of this expression with respect to u or this expression. I believe this expression is a little bit simpler and that'll leave us with 1 over 1 minus u squared du. So again, that's from taking this derivative here and then let's maybe put a box around this now that we have all of these parts that are necessary. Okay, so that's going to allow us to break this thing up into the integral of the natural log of x plus 1. So that's the natural log of 1 over 1 minus u times the natural log of x, which is u over 1 minus u over x, which is u over 1 minus u times x plus 1, which is 1 over 1 minus u. And then we have dx, which we will write as du over 1 minus u quantity squared. Okay, so we've changed everything except for the bounds of integration. Now we need to figure out what happens with the bounds of integration based off of this change of variables. So let's note if we set x equal to 0, then evaluating our expression over here on the right at x equals 0, we see that u is also 0. Next, as x approaches positive infinity, which corresponds to this upper end point, we'll see that u it approaches 1, just by standard rules for limits of rational functions. So that means here we have our limits of integration are 0 and 1, and we've made a complete transition from a x integral to a u integral. So that's good news. 
Now let's see what sort of simplification occurs. So we've got a one minus u squared in the denominator of the denominator, as well as the numerator of the denominator. So that means this term right here will cancel these two terms right here. Okay, so that's good. One other thing that we can do is multiply this natural log by negative one and multiply this natural log also by negative one and have that take the reciprocal of the argument. But since we multiplied them both by negative one, then we actually didn't change anything because negative one squared is positive one. So that leaves us with the integral from zero to one of the natural log of one minus u times the natural log of um, one minus u over u. And now this is all happening over u du. So like I said, that's from multiplying this by negative one using natural log rules, multiplying this by negative one and also using natural log rules. But we can take our second natural log and apply another natural log rule says that says the natural log of a quotient is the difference of logs. So in fact, we can write this as the natural log of one minus u minus the natural log of u and perhaps that'll be a little bit easier to work with. Okay, so let's see what we'll have. We'll have the integral from zero to one. Now I can take this natural log of one minus u and distribute it onto those two pink box terms. And that'll leave me with the natural log squared of one minus u over u du minus the integral from zero to one of, now we'll have the natural log of one minus u times the natural log of u over u du. And now we'll bring this intermediate result to the top and then work towards the end. Okay, so this is where we left off. We had our goal integral via this substitution over here could be broken into the following two integrals, which we will now evaluate one at a time. So let's maybe look at this one that I'm underlining in green first. Okay, so I'll start here with the substitution and I'll substitute back to the x variable, but it won't be the same substitution that's going over here. We're like forgetting this substitution, if you will. So what substitution will we use in this case? Well, let's take x to be equal to one minus u. That means u is the same thing as one minus x. And it means du is equal to negative dx. So let's see, that's gonna leave us with the integral from one to zero, because when x is equal to zero, u is one, and when x is equal to one, u is zero then we'll have the natural log squared of x over one minus x, and then this is times minus dx, because du is negative dx here. Okay, good. But now we're gonna do the standard thing and take this minus sign and change the order of integration. So I'll change this to zero to one and make this just dx. And this may not have seemed super helpful, but in fact it is. And that's because one over one minus X can be expanded as a geometric series. So let's recall that down here in this box. So we have one over one minus X is the same thing as the sum as N goes from zero to infinity of X to the N, as long as the absolute value of X is less than one. And in fact, the absolute value of X is less than one on this entire interval, except the end point, but a single point will not change the value of an integral. So that's okay. That means we can take this and exchanging the order of summation and integration, which we can do by the dominated convergence theorem, we can write this as the sum as n goes from zero up to infinity of the integral from zero to one of x to the n times the natural log squared of x dx. Okay, so that's good. And now there's a couple of ways to calculate this inside integral. Maybe the way that we will do it is via yet another substitution. So the substitution I'd like to do here will simplify x, or simplify the natural log of x, and that will be setting x equal to, let's see, e to the t. 
So that means dx is equal to e to the t dt. And then of course, the natural log of x is just equal to t. That means the natural log squared is equal to t squared. Furthermore, when x is equal to zero, that means that t is approaching negative infinity. And when x is equal to one, that means that t is equal to zero. So that'll change our bounds of integration. So that leaves us with the sum, as in goes from zero to infinity. And now we'll have the integral from minus infinity up to the number zero. And then we'll have t squared e to the n plus one times t dt. So the t squared comes from the natural log of x squared. We get one e to the t from dx n e to the t's from x to the n. So that ends up being n plus one times t. And now we can evaluate this maybe using tabular integration, AKA the famous DI method. So we have a polynomial times a transcendental function. We'll put the polynomial over here in the D column and the transcendental function, the exponential function over here in the I column. So let's say this is T squared. This is E to the N plus one times T. And now we'll take derivatives down one side and antiderivatives down the other side. So this is gonna give us 2t, two, 2, and then here, here we'll have 1 over n plus 1 times e to the n plus 1 times t, and then 1 over n plus 1 squared times e to the n plus 1 times t. And then we'll have one more that I left out, which will be 1 over n plus 1 cubed e to the n plus 1 times t, and then we'll vary the signs. So this is attached to a plus, this is attached to a minus, and this one is attached to a plus. Now we're gonna like skip a little bit, but notice that these first two terms, the one attached to t squared in the exponential and 2t in the exponential, when evaluated at negative infinity and zero will both give us zero for two different reasons. So that means these are not part of our final answer. Then the last one will give us zero when uh, evaluated at negative infinity, and will, it will give us two over n plus one cubed when evaluated at zero. So that means that this whole thing collapses to the sum as n goes from zero to infinity of two over n plus one quantity cubed. So you can work out the couple of details that I skipped fairly easily, I think. But that's a well-known sum. That's in fact twice the Riemann zeta function evaluated at three. And that's really the simplest way of writing this sum. Okay, so let's maybe bring this up and then we'll focus on the second integral. So we've taken care of our first integral. Now we're gonna take care of this second one. And for this second one, we'll also use a series expansion, but this time we'll use the series expansion for the natural log of one minus u. So I'll write it down and then I'll kind of point where that comes from. So using the series expansion for the natural log of one minus u, we'll see that this is equal to the sum as n goes from one to infinity of negative one over n times the integral from zero to one of u to the n minus one times the natural log of u du. Okay, so this u to the n minus one, or really this u to the n over n sum was the natural log of one minus u. And just as a reminder of that, how that came up, we know that one over one minus u is equal to the sum of u to the n, but if we take the antiderivative of this series expansion, we'll get the natural log of one minus u equals negative the sum of u to the n plus one over n plus one, which is the same thing as negative the sum of u to the n over n if we start at n equals one and go to infinity instead of starting at n equals zero. Then that being said, we have an n minus one here because of this u in the denominator. Okay, but now we can actually essentially play the same game that we did before to calculate this inner integral. 
And like I said, that's because exa it's exactly what we just did. And what we'll get for this integral, again, with that substitution and stuff like that, will be minus one over n squared. So let's see, putting this minus one over n squared with this minus one over n, will give us the sum as n goes from one to infinity of one over n cubed. Notice those minus signs cancel, but that's just the Riemann zeta evaluated at three. But that doesn't take into account this minus sign that was built into our formula. So in fact, our final answer will be twice the zeta function evaluated at three minus one time the zeta function evaluated at three. So that means our final answer is just one time the zeta function evaluated at three. And we have a final value for our goal integral. Now, if you like integrals like this, I've done a lot of them on the channel because they're fun videos, I think. Maybe you should check out the one that's on the screen right now, and that's a good place to stop.